Welcome to a Muscle Maintenance with In Shape Fitness. I am Coach Kim in New York City. Happy New Year. This is the first podcast workout of 2020. The new decade, the new year, the new week. It's Monday. And what other new things are there? And, and life is already traumatic and in turmoil here in the United States. I know we have some listeners from other parts of the world, but if you've been paying attention to the world in the United States over the last little while, uh, the last few days, just the first few days of, of January of 2020, you know that we are uh, already in, you know, just this heap of political drama and things are crazy and it is the first Monday of the new year. And I know in New York City where, where I see clients and where uh, I send my daughter to public school and I am out with my neighbors and talking about things going on, we're all already just, you know, overwhelmed with with the ongoing sort of just discussions about everything in our in our lives. So the, the, the point I'm making is, do you want to work out? Yes, we do want to work out because we have to. It's not necessarily the most exciting part of your day. And as you know, all of the AM muscle, ma- muscle maintenance workouts are pretty short. They are, they never include equipment. And today we're going to do one that is sort of a, a nod to the fatigue that we feel in the summer, or sorry, the winter months when, when, uh, when we experience seasonal affective uh, sort of conditions like, you know, fatigue early in the day and, and uh, just general lethargy from the lack of sunlight. And so we, I was joking around with a client about feeling like a rotisserie chicken in a workout where we were doing some stuff facing the floor and then we were moving to the side and then, you know, back to the floor and back to the side and face up and stuff like that. We ended up designing a whole workout around the rotisserie um, sort of motion in terms of the position that you're in as a as a as someone working out so we're going to do the entire workout on the floor and it's going to take about 20 minutes in total but i'm going to teach you the moves and then hopefully there'll be a segment where we can i can pinpoint the exact minutes where you would start the podcast if you want the guidance later on in terms of doing this session multiple times which hopefully you will of course because you should be exercising every day now that doesn't mean that you should be taking a boot camp class every day it doesn't mean that you should be going for a run for half an hour or an hour whatever every day it doesn't mean that you should be doing a yoga class every day it means that you have to wake up your body when you wake up in the morning your mind you have to stimulate blood flow and cellular processes in order for your body to function at its best level at its highest level so these sessions are designed to work all of the muscle groups of course and to get your heart rate up a little bit for sort of a um, you know kind of overview a comprehensive um, take on metabolic activity but it is really designed to give you the habit formation skill that the, a tool to develop a, pl- a plan for yourself hopefully you'll master some of these moves and then you can use them for other things as well so let's get started we're going to plop right down on the floor so we're starting here right at the four minute mark we're going to be on hands and knees thinking about our body parts normally we do a postural systems check and i have you stand up on your feet or you're or you're maybe seated at a chair this time you're on your hands and your knees like a four-legged animal and that means you want to make sure that your shoulders and your wrists make a straight line up and down you want to think about opening up your fingers and making sure that you press into the floor make contact with the floor uh, through through using the whole hand not just mashing the heel of the hand into the floor that's very important for for wrist fatigue purposes then you want to make sure that your knees and your hips line up vertically as well and that your head is in a neutral position you're going to move your head a little bit but in terms of quadruped as a position this is anatomically neutral you don't want an arch in your back and you don't want to do anything with your upper back or whatever all right your feet most people like to uh, let your feet relax on the the top of the foot but if that's uncomfortable for you if that causes a cramp you can bend your ankles a little bit and put the balls of your feet on the floor as well so the first thing we're going to do uh four five actual total sets 
of three exercises each. One for one for five repetitions, one for 10, and one for 15. And the first three exercises are exercises where you face the floor. And then we're going to turn. And then we're going to turn up. And then we're going to turn to the other side. And then we're going to finish facing the floor at the end. So the first three exercises are in a position, quadruped is what we're in now, or prone position, which, as I'm sure you can imagine, is going to, at some point here, include a plank. Um, and uh, at the back end, we're going to also include some push-ups. But the, the very first is something you should really know and, and appreciate and do as many times as you possibly can when you're on all your, uh, you know, on hands and knees on the floor. And that is the cat camel. I am not a big fan of yoga as a, uh, you know, sort of as a, as a sole standalone practice for fitness because I think it leaves a lot out, even though the yoga the sort of mentality, the uh, relaxation components of it, obviously the breathing components of it are very, very important. Um, and and we, we, we introduce those kinds of moves into all of our exercise routines, but yoga in terms of what its purpose is, is to maximize the range of motion through all of your many, many, many joints in your body, right? The one that we're working with in terms of the cat and the camel is your spine. The only thing that you move is your head, which drops like a bowling ball so that your cervical spine, the neck, is going to flex downward. And then you round up the thoracic part of your spine, the sort of big part of your upper back, pressing up into the air like a scared cat and you take a deep breath here as well inhale deeply through your nose and exhale through your mouth and then the inverse slowly moving your body to the inverse of this is the camel where you lift your head and your neck and then contract the lower back so you go from the cat to the camel slowly five times. Inhale and move at the exhale. Pause. Inhale, move at the exhale. Pause. And then complete five repetitions of the cat and the camel. Really plentiful in its activation of soft tissues that provide the stability for your skeleton, your spinal skeleton. Remember, it's not just the bone and the disc and the bone and the disc and the bone and the disc, etc. all the way down. There are lots of soft tissues that correspond to each of the vertebra and the entire spine to ensure that the you know, side to side, forward, back, which is the motion we're, we're focused on here in cat camels, what that, what, how that works. And so by moving it in the morning, you are lubricating those soft tissues, providing it blood flow, pro providing it fluids, and really affecting the energy and the quality of your, of your day. Now, we're going to lift up into downward facing dog. Again, it's going to be 5, 10, and 15. So we're going to do 10 downward dog squats. And what that means is from cat camel on your in your quadruped position, lift your feet, lift your knees rather up. Keep your feet on the floor. Lift your knees up and so that your butt is in the air and you make a triangle with your body. That's the downward dog, downward facing dog, or a pike squat. Now, a downward dog squat is a simple bend your knees a little bit so that you lower your butt back down towards the floor and then straighten your legs again so that you feel your hamstrings stretch out. There's huge benefit there, especially if you sit all day. Bend your knees, straighten your legs. Bend your knees, inhale, straighten your legs, exhale. Bend your knees, straighten your legs. We're doing 10 of these. That's about four, I think. And inhale and exhale, straighten. That's five, six, seven, eight, and nine and ten very good now if you need a second in child's pose which is where you rest your body on your knees put your butt on top of your heels drape your torso across your thighs and stretch out your arms to stretch out your back and shoulders 
All right, that's child's pose, otherwise known as the hedgehog in my world. And now we're going to go to a plank. Now, the plank that we're doing is a plank jack, but we're gonna do 15 of those which means that you're doing a jumping jack basically in the plank form you don't do anything with your upper body it's just the the feet you jump your feet out jump your feet in however if you can't do that just hold a plank for 15 seconds or time starts now by the way or you could laterally step one foot out and then the other to make it a little bit harder moving planks are always more um, comprehensive more challenging of course but they because they uh, push-ups are the traditional moving plank right um, you're finished if you're doing the 15 second version and now we're gonna turn to the left side the um, the plank when when you're moving with uh, like a plank jack it elevates your heart rate in addition to forcing all of those core muscles to stabilize your, your torso um, so so valuable all right now lying on your on your um, uh, on your left side, your hips are stacked, your feet are stacked, and you're going to lift into a side plank. And you're only going to do five of these. You're going to do five hip dips where you stack your feet and lift into the side plank, hold your body up, you're on your elbow with your elbows in a straight line with your shoulder, and then you lift your hips and lower them down, and lift your hips and lower them down. And keep going to a count of five, and then drop all the way to the side and rest on your rest on your arm you can either lie on your uh, on your sort of bicep completely lie down on the on the side and bring your knees up towards your waist to make two right angles at your hips and your knees for a simple clamshell and if you can do a clamshell with a kick at the top that is even better we're gonna do a count of ten of those so you lift up your right knee and then kick out your foot and then put the leg back down in place. And then lift, kick, bend, lower down. Kind of four step process there. We're doing 10 of these. We call these clamshell kicks. My 92 year old client uh, on the Upper East Side here in Manhattan calls these Pele. And he just, he just simply calls them Pele. Uh, if I say John Pele is next, he knows exactly the position to get into. <laughs> he knows exactly what to do. He's 92 years old. It's the greatest thing. Um, the last of one that we're doing, which is uh, he also named, by the way, uh, we're doing 15 of, remember, 5, 10, 15 for each of these sets, is um, with same position, only you're going to pulse the right knee in towards your chest. So you lift up the right knee and then pulse in for a count of 15. Mr., uh, my, my client, uh, Mr. Train, he refers to these as muggers be, uh, because it's kind of like kneeing a, uh, an assailant, I guess, um, but you're lying down on your side. So anyway, but it's, um, they're side-lying muggers. Uh, go ahead and count out 15 of these guys, and then you're turning to face up towards your ceiling. It should be pretty quick. All right, now we're lying on your back. This is the supine position. And you're going to lay on your back. We're going to start with five roll-ups. And the reason we're doing this is not just because I still believe in the value of being able to sit up off the floor. There are a lot of exercise uh, specialists out there that say don't bother with doing crunches. And I don't do a ton of them. But from the lying down position, you've got to be able to get up. So your ability to bring your body into the seated position and then you don't want to strain your back but if you can reach towards your toes until your back is perfectly straight and your chest is is, is sort of pulled out push, pushed out but your your um your tummy muscles are pulled in you will feel a little bit of a stretch in your hamstrings as well and then you roll back to the lying down position and you're going to do five of those the next move is probably the hardest that we're going to do so once you get to number five and you lie back down, uh, go ahead and sit back up the last time. And you're gonna put your hands on the floor beside your butt with your fingers facing forward. So after these five roll-ups, the next is 10 folding tabletops. And the folding tabletop begins with you seated with your legs straight out 
this is not a comfortable position for many people, the L seat. It just is hard because of our seated lives, seated at a chair lives that is. Our hamstrings are so tight and so weak and our hips are so, so, so weak and tight as well. So what you do with your hands on the floor is you lift up your body into this tabletop position. It's almost a contortion because we also have these closed chests and when you lift your body up and you're really activating the pectoral muscles, you're looking up at your ceiling, your chest is really open and you're, you're feeling the back, um, the back muscles contract in your upper back. It's a lot for, for the strength that you may feel like you have. Um, the full tabletop is for you to go all the way back to the L seat. Now, if you can't get back to that L seat very easily and you want to sort of partially lower it back to the floor and then lift back up, that's okay too. But you're doing 10 of these and I want you, hopefully you've already gotten started because I want us to move along so that we can be finished by the 20 minute mark. As I said, we're going to turn to the right side uh, next and complete the same three exercises as we did on the left. And then we're going to finish the rotisserie routine with uh, one last set facing the floor at the end. All right, so after these 10 tabletop moves, we're going to do 15 hip bridges. Hip bridges are a tried and true exercise. I am a long distance running coach and coach thousands of runners in the New York City Marathon every year. Hip bridges are probably maybe lunges, but bridges are probably right up there in the top three of exercises that I have people do all the time and that I do all the time, every day, every day. So you lift up and lower down. Exhale as you lift up and then lower back down. The problem with hip bridges that I see when I observe people, because that's what I do, I observe people exercising a lot, very anthropological, um, your toes should not be in the air. You want to keep your feet flat on the floor and even emphasize the balls of your feet and your toes so that you use the back of your leg and your glutes a little bit more than you would if your toes are in the air and you're just pressing into the floor with your heels. Okay, you can do this. Now we're going to turn to the right side. We've got five side plank hip dips. Shouldn't be too hard, right? You're on your right side, right elbow, right shoulder in a line, lifting up, lowering down. Now, 10 clamshell kicks or Pele, depending on whether you're my 92-year-old client from Madison Avenue. So you lift up and you kick. And you lift up and you kick. You always exhale on the effort. Inhale as you return to your starting position. Position, Okay? And then lastly are those muggers. The, the 15 pulses with the left knee up in the air. Left knee coming, like pulsing in towards your chest. 15 of those guys. That's pretty fast. So that we can finish. That way you're going to finish with uh, two of my favorite exercises. When you get back to your, when you finish your muggers and you turn back to quadruped, so now you're facing the floor again, and I want you just to take a couple of, of seconds to think about the bird dog exercise, which is where your back is flat, you extend your right arm forward and your left leg straight back, and then return to the start position, and then extend the left arm forward and the right arm back, a uh, right leg back. So it's the combination, the diagonal, the X sort of that you're making with your body when you move the diagonal uh, limbs at the same time. Right arm, left leg, left arm, right leg. It activates those paraspinal muscles that I mentioned at the beginning of the workout, the muscles that connect the vertebra to each other. That is is the, the sort of active moving muscle in this, uh, in this exercise. It's subtle, very subtle, but you're doing five of those. Now you're going to do 10 pushups. All right. It's going to take a little longer than 20 minutes, but I know we can get this in 10 high quality pushups. I do 21 pushups every day because I do everything 21 times. If you've heard me talk about the five Tibetans, you know why. Uh, and if you haven't, let me know and I'm happy to explain it to you. Anyway, 10 good push-ups means that you're going to bend your elbows, lowering your body down to the floor as you inhale, and then push your body back up. Listen, if you can't do 10 push-ups on your feet, do them on your knees. 
If you can't do 10 push-ups on your knees, do them on a table. Lean up against a table. Keep your butt down. There can be no bend at your hip flexors when you are doing your push-ups. If you are bent at your waist, you're not executing an, a push-up in its, in its proper form. And you want to work on making sure that your form is good so that you can practice push-ups with success so that you can get better at them. All right, the last thing, slow mountain climbers on your elbows. All right, I say slow because that whole, you know, jack up like, like the boot camp sort of style mountain climbers is not what we're going for here. If you're on your elbows, you're going to move your left leg by bringing your left knee towards your elbow on that side. Your butt's going to come up a little bit for this, and then you move the right leg separately. There's no need for both legs to be in motion like a run, like a mountain climber, boot camp style mount, mountain climber, but you do 15 of those. So that concludes the rotisserie routine. What I will say as I'm trying to, to close up shop here is, is two things. One, the workout part began around the four minute mark in the event that you come back and you want to do that. Uh, do the routine itself again. And then we started getting into the, the real nuts and bolts of things a little bit, uh, a little bit after that, around six minutes. So give it a shot. I'm going to post these exercises on the InShape Fitness blog today, bodybyinshape.com, so that you could print it out easily if you, if you want it. And let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any ideas or any requests for podcast workout routines. I'm happy to record um, some some individual sessions that uh, that incorporate your favorite exercises. The the thing about New Year's resolutions, what, what is the, the date is January 19th, right? Jan- January 19th every year is when basically the experts say resolutions have, have, are, have all but failed. <laughs> what a sad state of affairs we live in that we can't push ourselves to get to what we want after just a couple of weeks we give up the thing about fitness is that it is not like we all want it but it's not a destination there isn't this like perfect place where you can say i'm fit i i'm good i don't need to do this anymore and that's the problem so do something really really small take a baby step and just do a couple of exercises every day it will make a difference. It will form a habit. It will provide you with the, the energy and the interest in moving your body uh, in, in other ways and, uh, and help you enjoy your life a little bit more. Happy 2020. I'm Coach, Coach Kim from InShape Fitness, and I will see you again next week.